welcome to the first interview skills workshop. Okay, welcome. Now, this is not a lecture. Okay, so please do not think this is a lecture. You did not come to hear me talk. This is not what this is about. This is full participation. I really do hope that you did take the opportunity to get the packet, okay? Because you will need it. You will need a pen. You will need a highlighter. You will need sticky notes. You will need the note cards, like I said, because the note cards will come in handy for two different exercises that we're going to do. So you will need all of that, okay? So we're going to, I'm going to talk about the lesson plan here shortly. You will get at the end of the session, you will get, I have on here four different handouts, but I ended up creating one more today. So you're going to get five, five handouts. And so each one of these handouts, I'm hoping that you're going to utilize them. They got like some commonly asked questions on there and things like that. We'll go over each one of those handouts as well. So you'll get a handout for the interview preparation. It's the study guide. Um, it's the communication, how to answer interview questions, most commonly um, interview questions, and then scenario questions. And we're going to have an exercise as well. Um, so let's talk about the lesson plan real quick. All right. So like I said, make sure you have all the materials that I just talked about, highlighters and pencils and things, because you will need it. Like I cannot express it enough. You will need it because I need your participation. Make sure your cameras are on because again, I don't want to talk to people um, that are in the dark. And just because your camera is off, that does not mean I'm not going to call on you. Okay. Now I am going to say this. If I don't get full participation from you when I call on you, I will remove you from the actual session, okay? And if I remove you, you already know you can't be added. All right, help my hints. Make sure that I hopefully that you guys did prepare for this, like that you took a look, that you did take a look at the actual packet. Um, so that way you knew what to expect from this workshop, okay? You saw that we we're going to be doing a couple of exercises, a couple of breakout sessions. Not everybody's going to be in a breakout session um, because I do need an audience. Okay, so not everybody's going to be in a breakout session, but you never know if I'm going to call on you. Okay, all right. And then also take notes. Like if you take some really good notes, like if you just come to hear me talk, then you're not going to really get everything that you need from it. But if you take notes and ask questions and things like that, you can get a lot more. If you participate, you can get a lot more from it. Like this whole point of this interview skill workshop is to make sure that you guys get placed. I placed 100 people um just last year for 2022 that was not a good enough number for me because years before um the year before that i placed almost 200 okay so i know the economy and everything like that is down or whatever but it is still my job to make sure that you are placed okay so that is the whole point of this interview skill but if you don't take advantage of it then what's the point why are you here tell me in the chat just put it in the chat just tell me in the chat tell me in the chat i don't need you to tell me put yourself back on mute tell me in the chat what are you planning to get out of this evening's workshop? What are you planning to get out of this? Like when you leave here, what is it that you're planning that you want to get from this workshop? And maybe some of the things that you tell me we are going to cover tonight. And then maybe some of the things you tell me we may not. And maybe I need to jot it down so that way I can make sure that I take care of it the next time. Okay. Um, I cannot, um, I cannot pretty much cover or know what you want if I don't know what you want. So it's okay, go ahead and put it in the chat. Just tell me what is it that you're planning to get from this workshop tonight? What is your whole, why are you here? What did you plan to get from here? <laughs> Craig said money, okay. Um, another person said how to crack the interview. Don't you worry, because we're definitely gonna talk about that tonight. Um, somebody says, I think I found it. <laughs> you found what? <laughs> okay. Um, Let's see. Oh, so they were looking for the package. Yeah, I see. Okay, yeah, I read a book. Okay, sorry, I'm going backwards. So, okay. Um, so let's see. How to be better at interview and to be specific in my answers. We're going to cover that tonight. Yeah. Um, learn how to do interviews. Tips on interviewing. Uh, uh, interviewing better. Just interview tips. Real experience interview. We're going to talk about that. Okay. And everything that we talk about, unfortunately, I have to use the mortgage project because that's the only project that I know. <laughs> okay, so I'll be utilizing the um, the mortgage project, but I'll be taking the mortgage project and putting it into the real world answers. Okay, um, how to be confident in my interviews. I'm going to touch on that as well. So these are really, really good things. And I really do hope that by the time you end, we end tonight, that you do get some of these answered and if not I'm jotting some of these down now to make sure that if whatever we don't cover I would love to make sure that we take care of it moving forward okay 
Because again, I got to place more than 100 people this um, this year, okay? You got to make 2023 your year because I don't want to see the same people here. In the next six months, I don't even want to see half of you still here. So I've already talked about, uh, so let's talk about the agenda real quick. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a warm up, okay? So what the chat thing was not a warm up, okay? That was just me testing your participation. <laughs> you probably said, didn't we just do a warm up? No, you did not. We're going to do a warm up and then we're going to also cover resume and LinkedIn quality. Um, that one is a good one because this is going to basically talk about before you get to that uh, to that interview, okay? So we're going to talk about the quality when it comes to your resumes and your LinkedIn's. We're going to do interview preparations with, with a study guide. So you're going to get a study guide, yay me. And uh, we're going to talk about SQL, um, common, uh, communication and delivery. Communication is key. And how to deliver your answers is very, very important to me. Um, I will talk more about that. And then we're going to do a PBJ exercise. We're going to then take a small break and then we're going to come back into most common interview questions. And I'm going to have interview questions for business intelligence, Power BI, Data Warehouse, uh, SQL. So all of that. OK, all of that will be given to you. Um, scenario questions and we're going to do an exercise. So we're going to strategize and talk about how to answer scenario based questions. So those are the questions that start off with tell me about a time when. Right. Everybody hates those. So we're going to talk about the strategy on how to answer those scenario questions. And then we're going to do an amusement park exercise. And then last but not least, we're going to do a congratulations or a congratulatory letter to yourself. And then there's a template on how to do that. Okay, that one is very important to me because I did this to myself when I did it. All right, so if you still want to put in the chat um, what you plan to get from this, go ahead um, because I'll be going back through these to write down anything I don't feel like we're going to cover. So that way I can have it in the next one. Um, I also want to do this for IPBC Saturday. So maybe some of the things that we don't cover tonight that I can possibly do in IPBC Saturday, we're not going to do the same thing. This is not going to be, I'm going to complete, create a totally different one for IPBC Saturday. But everything that you see here tonight, I created this on my own. So the PowerPoint presentations, the packets that you got, the actual handouts, all of that stuff, me finding the resumes, finding the LinkedIn's and putting together the exercises and all of that. This was all me. I did not ask Ali for permission. This was all me because I wanted to make sure that you guys are mastering your interviews. Like that is so very important to me. Okay. And because, you know, I care. Are you ready? We're ready. Ready. Yes. Yeah. Ready. Oh, yeah. Ready. Ready. Yes. Ready. Yes. I just, ready. I just don't feel like y'all ready. Okay. We're okay. ready. All right. All right. So here's your warm up. Tell me in the chat. And I don't want you to tell me money, family, want a new career, other. I only want the number. Okay, that's all I want is the number. But what is your reason? Why did you come to Colder? Is it money? Like for me, it was money. Like a friend told me about how much money they was making. And I was just like, wait, I'm going to go join this school, this magic school that's going to help me make $100,000 a year. Like, right? So it was money for me. It was not my kids. Sorry, I'm a bad mom. It was not my kids. It was money that I found out about it. Okay. So was it a friend that potentially told you about the money that you could possibly make? And that's the reason why you came to Colorado? Listen, no, there's no judgment. This is a free judgment zone. There is no judgment because I just told you it was not my kids. My kids, is they trash. They raggedy. It was money. They got me. Okay. All right. Was it family? Are you tired of living paycheck to paycheck? And in my case, it was, I was not living paycheck to paycheck. I was living paycheck to Monday. I got paid Friday and I was broke on Monday. Because mm -hmm. once the rent was paid... <laughs> Well, let's just pray to God that I had enough gas to get to work for the next two weeks. Okay. Okay. Right. So was it, were you tired of living paycheck to paycheck? Was it that you just want a new career? You working at Amazon, maybe you're an Uber driver, maybe you're tired of working at a delivery plant. What is it? Or is it other? Take a minute, figure it out. Maybe it's some other reason why you join. Again, there is no judgment here. So tell me, why did you come to Colbury? Because this is going to help me to figure out the reason, the real reason why you're here. Are we allowed two options or just one? One option. Uh, Davion gave me three, four, and one. No, one. You only get one. Well, Y'all called you out. <laughs> you only get one. <laughs> All right. So quite a few of you gave me like one and two, one and three. No. I, give me the top reason. Give me the top reason. So go back, you, you, you cheaters who gave me more than one. Give me one. What is your number one reason? It can't be one and two. Can't be family and money. No, gotta be one. So pick one. 
<laughs> Somebody gave me an emoji with like the dollar sign on the tongue. Okay, so I know what that means. <laughs> all right, all I need is the number, just the number. All right, so let's talk about this. So I am seeing quite a few ones and threes. Apparently, y'all don't care about y'all family. Y'all trash. Y'all don't even care about y'all family. I see a bunch of ones and threes. Y'all are trash. <laughs> Y'all are raggedy. I mean, okay. not not really. I mean, all three one, other lies, but one you making money to to support your family, really. You know what I mean? You don't really do need money to take don't care of that family. <laughs> hey, but what if, what if your family supports you, mom? Hey, I live with my parents. He has it, a point. I, what, what, you know, listen, everybody don't get that luxury, Craig. I don't live with my family. <laughs> I don't live with my mama. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Okay. So um, let's talk about this. I'm seeing a lot of, I'm seeing, let's talk about the threes. I'm seeing a lot of threes. So anybody can take this off mute. I'm okay with it. But someone says they want a new career. Why? Like, why? Because it, it, this was told to me once before. Okay. Can someone, I... give me, hold on one second. When I was going through my situation, I actually had a life coach and I had a financial coach. And my financial coach, said to me, well, Mika, maybe if you didn't get your hair done every week, wait, okay, so you woke up trying to do right today. Okay, so you knew you were going to do a good job. So I cannot not get my hair done every week. But the fact that he was had all these thousands and thousands of dollars in his bank account, and yet I'm broke, then probably I should listen to this guy, right? So, and then he told me something which stood out to me, and I'll never forget this for this to this day. He said, being broke or being poor is an is a choice. It's an option. It's your choice. Because your life is whatever you make it out to be. He says, I had the same opportunities as you. Maybe, yeah, maybe I grew up in a better neighborhood. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. But he says, but still though, being broke or being poor is a choice. And I was like, what? Wow. That stuck to me. So my people who says, I want a new career, the people who chose threes, take some off mute. Tell me the reason why you want a new career. What's wrong with the career that you currently have right now? Um, I want to go first. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I don't know if I can say I have a career because I'm stay at home for like last 13 years. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't say I want a new career. I want one career I can that get into so it's Steve not says, nothing oh, wrong with my career okay okay yeah yeah anybody else who chose a three i did okay tell me uh, why you is, chose. i chose it because uh in my current job i heavily work with the uh, worksheet and i depend on data analysis uh analysis i receive all my documents from uh, tech and uh, i was like okay why don't i just go ahead and then learn it myself and I can, uh, you know, pull or uh, program everything on myself so that uh, I can do it all on me. So that's why I choose to uh, do the data analytics. I get it. He says he's already doing analytics, but he ain't getting paid for doing data analytics. That's what I heard. So my thing about it is that if I got to do that and lose, I might as well get paid for it. I get it. I get it. I get it. All right, hold on. So now we have some ones. So some people said money. So if you're not ashamed, like me, because I'm not ashamed, tell me the reason why you chose money for the reason why you came to Colibri. Like, did a friend tell you about it? Like, why did you come to Colibri and you chose one? I can go. Go ahead. Yeah, so my job is like, there's no growth. So I know I won't make any more money. And I needed to do something else. And so I found data analytics interesting. And so I was like, okay, this is possibly something I could, you know, turn to. I have a CIS degree already. So I was like, I'll just try to pivot off that and see where it goes. Anyone else? Who chose the one? Okay, I'll go. I'll go. Go ahead. All right. Whoever goes first. All right. Okay. So I, I choose money because, um, yes, money, but the real thing is really, I feel accomplished, you know, I've been in this country for 15 years, you know, uh, before I came here, I worked in corporate world, coming here, you know, you try to survive, so you do whatever you can find, and then I think that I reach a point where 
you know, I was about to push my wife to do what she wants to do. Now it's time for me to get back and do something that, uh, you know, going to feel really meaningless for myself first. So, yes. And then, uh, so a friend told me about Colaberry and uh, when I hear about, you know, uh, for me, like living in this country, at least you got to start making a little six figure salary to start really, I think, take advantage, full advantage of this country, what this country has to offer. So that was my motivation. It was one of the person who said they had a um, had a three. Who was that? Me. Oh, okay. one, actually. One. I chose money because one, coming from where I, I'm coming from, I was really comfortable. And then coming into America, I had to start from scratch. And starting from scratch, it wasn't funny. I couldn't get my kid the basic things that he needed. Mm -hmm. And it was making me feel incompetent. I didn't want that. So when I heard uh, that this program could actually help me switch, make a 360 overnight, I was like, sign me up. I'll do it. I'm sorry. That's me. I, I'm not ashamed to say I chose money. Guys, I get it. I get it. I get it. Now, wait a minute. So I got a people who chose four. Craig chose one and four. Um, but Craig, I'm going to take yourself off mute. What is your other? Because you didn't say money, you didn't say family, you didn't say want a career, you chose other. So what is your four? Um, I just picked it because, um, you know, we we really can't, you know, afford college. So I needed some other route to go. So it's not really about making money. It's just pretty much about, you know, trying to learn something instead of, because I'm not going to go to college. So I need to learn something. And this is a way for me to learn you know, gotcha. something that I could actually make a job out of, so. That and, works. You know, student loans and stuff comes with college also, so that's a plus. Don't I know. Okay. <laughs> okay. And there was one of the four. I did four. I saw, okay. okay. I did. Why did you say four? I said four is I wanted a career that I can work from home. My mm -hmm. job, I cannot work from home. I have to take my stuff there. 12 or more hours there so I choose four so I can be with my kids anytime when they need me you know it could be if it's specially contract whatever you do your job and you can tell them well I'll be back so I need that kind of job that flexible from home when I when I need to be with my kids I can be with my kids so that's what I choose okay Listen, I never want to work home when my kids were small mm -mm, because my job was my vacation. Mm -mm. So, yeah, God bless yeah. you if you want to work home, work from home and be with your children because that was not my thing. <laughs> I mean, they go to school, but they know whenever they need you, you can drop them and pick them up. <laughs> okay. I will I will say all of the above if, if there was an option for that because gotcha. everything here applies to me. Uh, money. I just uh, wanted to make it hard for you. That was all. I just wanted to make it hard for you. <laughs> so everything here really applies to me. Uh, the money, family, new career, because uh, the 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 family issue, dropping kids at school, and uh, you know, when I travel, it's very far distance for for my job. And then uh, all those things just pile up. And I think this career is better from what my friend told me. So, okay. really, well, you got a really good friend because a friend told me about it. So you got a really good friend. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we do need to go forward because we're on the time schedule. But I just want to say that all of these are really good reasons, okay? Like, even whether it's money, whether it's family, want a new career, other, like you said, some people may say it's all of them for me. And we're wrong. Somebody wrote in here, um, money can buy happiness. You are absolutely freaking right because whoever said that money can't buy you happiness, they lied because I am 100% happy. I promise you that, okay? So uh, <laughs> I am happy. <laughs> so my thing is, is that, but yes, now that I have money, it's all four, but uh. <laughs> But my thing is, is that I get it. It, it could be 
all of these. And money can make sure you take care of your family. It can give you the, a career change. It can get you all the other things that you want to do, travel, whatever, send money back home, whatever the case may be. So my thing is, is that um, there is no right or wrong answer here. It really, really not. I was just trying to figure out, you know, what was the reason why you came to Cola Berry? So let's move forward. Let's move to our very first situation. Okay. All right. So before we get into interviews, we're going to talk about resume and LinkedIn, but we're going to talk about the quality. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull from my laptop a couple of resumes. Okay. So what I need you guys to do is I need you to take two note cards. Two note cards. Get your note cards out. And on one note card, I need you to write the word yes. But it needs to be big enough so that way I can see it. So I need you to write the word yes. And then on the other note card, I need you to write the word no. Do not write it on the back because I'm petty like that. So I want you to use two. Okay. So I want you to have yes on one note card and no on the other, but make it big enough to where I can see it if you were to hold it up. All righty, so while you guys are doing that, before you even get the interview, you got to make sure that you have a really good resume, okay? This is how I measure whether or not your resume is good, because I may look at your resume, I may approve it and put you out there, but then once you get out there, I realize hmm, you're not getting as many interviews as I thought, so sometimes I have to go back and take a look at your resume again. You see what I'm saying? Or maybe your resume is good, but you're not getting past. You're doing a whole bunch of first interviews, not making it past the second round. So that tells me your, interview, your resume is good. It's just that now we need to work on the interview. So, but before you can even get the actual interview, your resume or your LinkedIn profile has to be top-notch quality. What you put in is what you will get out. That's what my mother used to tell me. What you put in is what you'll get out. You have to learn to invest in yourself. So, I, in the launch, created this whole document about resumes and how to create it and tell you what font to use and don't use icons and don't do this and don't do that. I even have a video that walks you step by step on how to do it and everything. I can count how many times people will actually look at it and they'll still submit to me a half written resume. And I'm like, you got to understand, they don't know you from Adam. Am I correct? Like, Stephanie, like, if you were to apply for a job, they don't know you, Stephanie. So the only thing that can go off of is your resume. So your resume will determine whether or not you get an interview because your resume is the one that's making that first impression for you. The quality, the work that you put into your resume will determine whether or not you get an interview. And that is absolutely true. Now, if your resume don't look good, they'll toss it to the side and say, nope, they want someone who's going to put forth effort into your resume. So this is what we're going to do for our little exercise. Hey, Mika, I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm sorry. I kind of missed what you said in the beginning. What are we writing yes and no to? Oh, on a note card, you're going to write yes on one note card. And then on the second one, you're going to write the word no. But it needs to be big enough so that way I can see it. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to pull some resumes. I am not about humiliation. Anybody who knows me, you know I do not humiliate. I will pull you to the side in a heartbeat. I do not do humiliation. So the resumes you see, the names will be blacked out. Emails, phone numbers, anything like that, all that will be blacked out. Because one, I want to make sure that there's no bias. I don't want anyone says, oh, I know her. And then interview her. No, I don't want you to do that. This is completely biased. We do not know who these people are. So what you're going to do is we're going to basically, I'm going to show a resume. I just want you to look over. Don't look at the bullet points. You don't need to read. Just look at the quality of it. And just by looking at it, you're going to tell me whether yes or no, you would interview this person solely based off of just looking at the quality of the resume. Does that make sense? Stephanie is smiling. Why are you smiling, Stephanie? Guys. <laughs> how, how do we evaluate the quality of the LinkedIn? You just look at it. Like, is there too much space? Is it misspelled? Like misspelled words? Like, if you saw it, do it? It doesn't even look like a good resume. Do it look like trash? Like, that's for you to determine. Like, there is no, there's no template. I'm not giving you no template. That's for you. If say you were the actual hiring manager and this resume fell on your desk. Based on what you see, would you interview this person? That's all I need you to know. So I'm not going to feed you no information. I'm not going to sway you no way or another. This is totally your option, okay? 
And then if we choose some yeses, then I'll ask maybe a couple of you the reason why you think yes. And if some say no, tell me why we say no. The whole reason here is to just to see the quality and the work that we need to do to improve. Everybody needs improvement. We're going to do the same thing for LinkedIn. Nobody knows anybody from LinkedIn because I didn't have, I, I wasn't going to go through all that and put them into a Word document and then cross out their face. I wasn't going to do all that. Okay. So I pull some LinkedIn's from people we don't know. Okay. Because again, I'm not about humiliation. All right. Are we ready? Are we ready? So what I'm going to do is pull the first one. I want you to only just take a look at it. Don't tell me yes or no yet. Don't like that. Don't wait. Don't just wait for me to post and just automatically no. Like just take a look at it first. And then I'm going to say, post your question. And I mean, post your answer. Yes or no. That's all I'm going to say. So when I ask you, just post yes or no. One, don't put both yes and no. I only need one answer. Okay. Let me pull it from here. So here we go. Resume number one. I'm going to give it a full screen. Okay. I want you to take a look first before you just respond. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to scroll down so you can see it and all of that. Okay. So the name is crossed out. This is the resume. They have their name up here at the top, city and state. Let's just assume this is their email. And we have this over here. And we got a blank page. I'm going to go back up. You don't have to worry about the bullet points. Nobody's asking you to read it. Just solely based off what you see, what you interview this person and post yes or no hold up your note card tell me whether you would or you would not post up your <laughs> dang craig okay good job all right okay i'm seeing a bunch of no's okay okay because i stopped there can you say yes Kenya, why? Why would you interview this person? Because they have a, if it's a lot on the uh, resume, but they have a lot of skills, uh, a lot of good looking skills as well. It just needs to be organized better, but I would interview them. Oh, good job. Okay. All right. I can see some more yeses. Who had yeses up? Who had yeses up? Anybody else had a yes? Kenny, you, you stand on that branch alone? You the, you all out there by yourself. Everybody said no, but you, Kenny, you don't sit out there. All, hey, girl, what's how to you, girl? I ain't nothing wrong with being different, girl. Listen, nobody said no. Okay. All right. Kenny was all out there. Yes. So anybody who said no, you can go ahead and take step off from you. Tell me the reason why you said no. Because the way the resume is configured, like, it's, like, kind of, everything is all, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not configured properly. Yeah, it's, like, you have to It's really just too much like, to look at. It's just, like, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point. Yeah, bullet, bullet point. point. Yes, like, yes, dude, yes, 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 yes. The individual did not bullet take bullet time point. to work on the resume. What he did was just to copy and paste all the information on a Word document and then submit it. Right. Or if you're going to do like bullet points like that, like uh, uh, Craig uh, stated, like you can at least space in between because it, everything is like, you know, it's just so close. It's not, it's, it's giving me anxiety because me, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a reader, but it's like, everything is just like so in, in, so in, in a tight space. And then they got a blank, sp a blank page, you know? And multiple pages too. Yeah. 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 It's giving claustrophobic. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Anybody else? Somebody else who said no? Anybody else want to give a shot the reason why you said no? I thought uh, an interviewer might like think about your code then as well. Like if they look at that, they might think that's yeah, yeah, how your that's code might good, be. I I like you're not that organized mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. Yeah. The format is all off. Okay. That was a great point. That was a great point. Maybe. They, they're not in the mood to go through everything, like reading all of the lines. Like, like that's too much to read. 
Yes, for me, I put I put no because it was like everybody said, is is too much. You have to be uh, there has to be like a couple of big lines so people can see, and then the thing that you have the interview, you know, to show your skill for. But this is too much. Uh, resume I believe should be maybe one page and. Uh, all right, all right. Let's move on to the next one. Sorry, Kenya, you stood out there all alone, sweetheart. Sorry. <laughs> let's, see where, let's see where you stand, Kenya. All right. Resume number two. Boy, y'all a tough crowd. All right. Resume number two. Got their name up here. I removed the phone number, email. We have location. Okay. So they got a little certificate here. Okay. Let's take a look. We move forward. Like Gives you instructions. Come. Okay, one line. All right, take a moment. I'll go back up, go back down, take a moment, take a look at it. And even if it's just okay, it's fine, but just take a look. Okay, so post. Yes or no? How are we feeling? How are we feeling about this one? Okay. 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 But but there's a caveat. I'm gonna explain. I'm gonna explain okay. something. Okay. I'm seeing quite a few yeses on this one, but Malika, you stood out, girl. You was like, no, babe. When I said she was all in the camera, no. Okay. So Malika, what? There was everybody here is saying yes, just about. Besides the one person who said they had a caveat. So. But tell me the reason why you're saying no. Why are you still, because you was a tough cookie, girl. You said no, just about all of them so far. So why is it enough for you? You know, before getting to the professional like experience and seeing the certificate and everything, I was going to say yes. But after moving down, I again, it looks like too much for me. I, I want it to be more summarized, like giving them like good points, but... I still think it's too much. I get what she's saying, but however, unlike the last resume, they have things categorized like responsibilities. Uh, you know, they have things separated with uh, with the title. So I know what I'm reading. What uh, uh, as far as the bullet points, uh, what title they're, they're under, I know what I'm looking at. You know, whether it's uh, uh, ETL or you know whatever they have it categorized with the bullet points. So it's not so much. It wouldn't give me as much anxiety because, okay, I know this is SQL. I know this is uh, uh, ETL. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. But I do get what she's saying, though. I do get what she's saying, you know? But it's better formatted, unlike the other one. Right. This one's a bit more structured. Okay, me I put yes just because of the certification. Like there's something that he puts forth already. So if I'm looking for someone of the certification, you already had something that caught my eyes, and then the rest we can uh, dig into it. If I want to interview him to make sure that you know, I was making a mistake or I have a, a field gap I, I need to follow. Yeah, so okay. that's why I put yes. So, do you guys understand? So you, believe it or not, these are your peers. Like the, I pulled these resumes from Colaberry, <laughs> as you can see, okay? So my thing about it is that if you guys are a tough crowd to crack, how do you know that the interviewer is not going to be just as tough, right? I don't and think I'm that tough, though. <laughs> I, I see the skills. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> concerned about format as much. If I see the skills yeah. and, and I see that they're certified and I can read, I mean, why not interview them? But Kenya, this is where I have to counter because if you didn't take the time to format and actually structure your resume, which you, is pretty much like this is what they're seeing before they see you, you know. Yeah, but it's pretty so, structured though. They have professional summary. They have research. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It this may be a lot, but better. it's there. Yeah, this one's better than the last one. I would say that. That's why I say yes. You know, but. Uh, it's certain things that that could be tweaked though, you know, because when you when you building your resume, you want to make sure it's the best, and because it's what uh, again, it's like what you're presenting to the company before they even see you, before they interview you, they look at your resume, you know. So and like uh, uh, David uh, stated earlier, 
if you structure your resume like that, just imagine what your code is going to look like. Because like they tell us, you know, when you're no longer at the company, other people and developers are going to work with your code. So like if they can't read your resume, they're going to think, oh, what does his code look like? You know what I mean? I don't think so. I, I guess I'm looking at the content more so than the design. <laughs> I'm looking at the content. Like, no, you it? don't want to take chances no. when you submit your resume, right? So I don't think you need to have a Can you not necessarily the design, but more like the arrangement, how you put it, how you organize it. That first one is not organized at all. You know that that kind of person will not pay attention to detail and most companies want someone who can do that then you you stay strong don't get it girl you stay on your word you stay strong girl don't yeah she's right though against you she's the right though the only thing though. that would change oh, is ahead, that Kurt. table the table and the video because i know those are big you know no-nos when it comes to resumes you're not supposed to be putting no tables and you're not supposed to put in no videos on there but well, oh, i did like it the, better let's move on to Why? the third one and also it's too much information The uh, people don't have time to read your whole uh, history like that's a lot so they just see one page maximum one page that's it that's too long too long just too much history Craig already. Craig already. Saying no. This was a book. Wait a minute. <laughs> Craig already saying no. no. I'll tell you why, though. Why, why Craig? I was wrong and Craig was like, no. Why? Because <laughs> the the experience is at the very, very bottom. You're supposed to you put you're supposed to put your experience at the top, and so when they have to scroll all the way to the bottom, they're already seeing like they're not seeing you know, what you've been up to recently. And, you know, I watched a couple of videos on like how to make your resume, you know, pop. And they, that's the number one thing they say is to put your experience at the very, very top. Yeah. Hmm. It's like, it's almost like this would be a good resume if they just flipped it. Yeah. Just flipped it around. Now that he the skills that are at the top, the experience is at the bottom and everything else doesn't, I mean, they should just flip it. But wait, it says professional experience. It has five years, five years of experience. It says professional experience at the time. Five years of experience. No, I meant like your job, oh. like your, like what you're, okay. what you're doing now. Gotcha. But I believe he's doing a long professional summary. So it's still his professional summary. I think it's too long. <laughs> Yeah, is it really necessary to explain long. like SQL yeah. and SSAS? Is it really yeah. necessary to explain those? Yeah. Just believe, mentioning believe, it is enough, right? I believe it should be like a paragraph and then you can add some bullet points, but not like that. That's too much. That yeah. They almost like they almost like gave part. the definition of like what SQL is, what SSIS <laughs> is. <laughs> this will tell me about okay. Last one. Prepare yourself for this one. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Take your time. Yes or no? Would you interview this person? It's education, certification. Look, they got yes. professional summer, education, technical skills, communication skills, professional experience. It's like, it's cute. Yeah. Yes, I'll interview this person because it's kind of on one page and uh, it's different. So, uh, like, it's intriguing. I want to see this person. It's busy. I think it's way too freaking busy for me. But, okay, maybe if I point it out, it'd be in black and white. So, I don't know. <laughs> Wait, do you think it's too busy because how everything is, like... Yeah, it's yeah. to me, it's busy. It's very busy. And like I don't even know where to look first. Like, do I look over here? Do I look up like does this oh this don't this not together? This is separate. Okay, like to me it's busy. It's too busy. It's I'm busy. glad you said that because I'm actually working on Mars. <laughs> yeah, but, was, but in my opinion, busy. although it's all like next to each other, it's easy to see 
everything like yeah separately. and that's my i said yeah, yeah. because everything yeah. is kind of like you know this one for me is uh, it's fine this one is fine like at one glance glance you can see whatever i know you're gonna take a lot of work yeah. but the presentation is more appealing yeah it is yeah and you can tell this person cares about what they're putting out I you know agree I mean? with Mika. If I don't know where if it was an SSRS, if it was a reporting job, I probably would hire this person. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm. I don't want to sound like a hater, but I'm gonna say no to this one too. I'm sorry. It just like I Y'all said. Y'all a tough crowd. Y'all a tough crowd. Okay. So those are just resumes. So again, we're gonna talk about the quality. So as you guys saw, that you guys are picking apart. Well, this is too much. This is too busy. This is too long. It's formatted wrong. These are the same thing that the recruiters are doing. How do you think they feel when they're looking at 461 applications just for one position, right? So my thing about it is, is that you've got to put effort into your resume. You have to, because yeah, even though you may have, even though you may have um, all the skills and the qualities and things like that, but my thing about it is, is that it still has to get it still has to get to the actual interviewer um, through that recruiter. Do the recruiter think it looks good enough to make it to that? Because you got to understand if a recruiter send it over, he's telling you, hey, take a chance. And they're putting their name on the line. But if they're sending over something that looks half sloppy and everything else. So like I said, I'm not saying that it won't happen. I'm not saying that very first, you know, that very first resume won't get no hits. I'm not saying that at all. But I promise you, resume two and three, it's going to get a lot more hits than resume one because of the formatting, because of the structure, because they took the effort in the time. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. So the quality in your resume. So the reason why we're doing this first is because you, before we can talk about interviews, you got to get in the door first. And this is how you get in there. Okay. Let's take a look at a few uh, LinkedIn's and then we'll move on to the next slide. Resume number five, Davion. <laughs> 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 all right, let me go back to my. Phone. I haven't gotten there got yet. Look, trust me, I'm taking all of this into consideration. Trust me <laughs> when I tell you. I don't think this is gonna work. Let me see. Oh, it did. Okay, LinkedIn. Okay, so this is LinkedIn. Maybe it's because I'm not connected to them. That's why I don't see no picture. But based on LinkedIn, would you, as a recruiter, want to interview this person? Now they have the about section. You know, they told you a little bit about themselves, but, uh, no. Okay. Let me see what you're working with. Y'all working with. Yes. No, no. Yes. Uh -huh. no. Straight no. out the gate. No. <laughs> no. No. Just, uh, Kenya, yeah, now I know not. you're trolling. Oh, you're yeah. <laughs> no, I know yeah, you're trolling. Yeah, they don't even Kenya. have a picture. No. Come on, yeah. Kenya. <laughs> because I'm not connected to them, that could be the reason why I don't see the picture. So that could be it. It don't even matter, though. But they only have the about section. The thing yeah. just says Power the BI is developer. Right the about section is right here. Yeah, I know. That's all they had, though. <laughs> okay. Y'all just so used to having y'all projects and stuff on there. That's the all knows. it is. I don't understand the nose. I mean, all you have to do is read the experience. Well, it's just, are we just looking yeah, at the design but or me, are we looking how do at I know the yeah, Yes, let me tell you why. Some people, especially people that help operate a business, like don't have time like that and are making time to see you, to even consider you into their company. They're, if it's unorganized and everything is just all clumped together, they're, they're not going to waste time that they are already taking time out. You know what I mean? They're not going to go for it. They're not. You have two, 300 people to interview. You want yeah. to go inside each one of them to look at their about. Your headline has to be visible. The headline, you know, once they mm -hmm. see the headline, they know whatever you are without them going into the... Account. Right. And another, and, thing like, yeah, I agree. and another thing y'all probably didn't notice, um, that the first person that I just had up, she only had like 94, she only had 94 uh connections. Like that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, that's you know, thing. no profile week. picture, no <laughs> banner, only the about like how do I know this ain't no bot or something? Yeah. <laughs> how do I know this a real person? See, this person, uh hold on, let me think yes. about this one. <laughs> yes, yes, all the way. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, recommendations. Okay. Okay, just for that, I'll say yes. Because she's actually got, you know, someone to vouch for her. 
And she's got the p- profile picture. I can get an idea who she is. <laughs> I can tell she's exactly. Kind of like, and that's what I'm saying. Your profile picture already, uh, like, okay, this is a person. They look serious, you know. I can tell she's like them. creative with the background and everything. I like that. Me, it's she's like your King Emmanuel. When I see that she has more than 500 connections, that means like, okay, she she has been there for some time. I don't know. Yeah. So this is a customer true. service representative right here at Hold Hanover Insurance Group. No. <laughs> so no. Yeah, no. It's a no. Interest it's smart it's a no. And Tim Tebow. All right. What is that going to do? Right, Tim Listen, I bet you I don't never use y'all. Okay, hold on. Last one. Okay, Elvis, let's oh, go. Crap. I knew that was, yeah, this is Elvis. Um, let me go to his real quick. Mm. I have high I hopes for Elvis. Is. This is like that Black Mirror episode about social media. <laughs> it is. This is the last one. Your social score is going up, Elvis. I'll send you some social score points. <laughs> So this is Elvis. Yes. I like it. And even though, look, uh, uh, Kenya, you see even his about is kind of long, but it's spaced out. It's, you know, it's grouped together. You know, he it's not time. He put quality and work into his about. Yeah. And put then bullet his, points in there. Right. And even his picture, it looks more professional. It's given like, you know, it's like, it's okay, recommendations. person is, Oh, yeah, and another good. thing is, is that he has a YouTube page, so he's actually using his thumbnail from his YouTube page as his background. Oh yeah, yeah bro's got the job. Just another man. Bro's giving me the job. And, he didn't <laughs> work there. and on top of that, he put BI engineer, developer, but also ETL, SQL, SSAS, SSRS, Power BI, um, Microsoft Azure, all of this stuff. He put all of this, so he's letting you know he's not a one-trick pony. He has, he's a jack of all trades. Yep. Oh, yeah. All right. So the takeaway that we get from this is the fact that you got to make sure that you recognize the quality that you're putting into the work that you're doing for your resume. Before you can even get to that interview, you got to get through the door and your resume is what's going to do it. So you're only going to get out what you put in. Invest in yourself. No one is going to invest in you the way you invest in you. Right. So. If you love yourself, invest in yourself and take the time that you need to do it. That makes sense? All yeah, right. Yeah. Moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. All right. So let me pull up handout number one. And yes, you will be getting this at the end of this session. Handout number one. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Now, our resume was stellar. We got an interview request. How in the heck am I going to prepare for this freaking interview? I am so glad you asked. Oh, my God, right? Okay, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So preparation process. So the thing is, is that you're going to have to learn how to make sure that you prepare yourself for the interview, okay? So you're gonna have to take whatever topic, whether it's SQL, Power BI, whatever, whatever topic they give you, you're gonna have to research it by Googling in YouTube and then create a story on how you're going to sell your experience. Does that make sense? Okay, so I don't believe y'all understand what I'm saying. So I'm gonna scroll down and these are some of the topics. Now, you do have your recruiter interview questions. Those are your typical, tell me about yourself. Why are you leaving your current company? What salary are you looking for when you don't know the pay range? What's your SQL experience? Tell me about it. Uh, tell me about your, and then you can insert your uh, tier two tool, which is Power BI, Tableau, Click, Data Warehouse, whatever. And then who is Colaberry? These are your typical recruiter phone screening type interview questions. Okay. And then the next one you have is your technical interview questions. And these are all SDLC, Agile, blah, 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 blah. Now, these I pulled from IPBC and from the Swelly Bootcamp class. 
all right? And then you have questions that you're not going to answer, like citizenship. No one should be asking you to send over your green card or anything like that. Now, if you're kind of application or on you on Indeed or whatever, and you know how they ask you, are you authorized to work in the United States? Yes. Okay. Um, will you need sponsorship in the future now or even in the future? Yes or no, right? But no recruiter should be asking you to send over confirmation or send over a copy of your green card or whatever. No one should be asking for that. No one should be asking for your social security number, not even the last four. No one should be asking for your driver license or your date of birth, especially a recruiter. Guess what? I can contact you, Craig, and say, hi, Craig. My name is Jeannie, and I'm from Robert Hatt. And I have this wonderful job, this wonderful opportunity. But before I can get you over there, can you provide me the last four of your social and your date of birth? Right? And you're all like, sure, I'll give it to you. And at the end of the call, I'm saying, thank you, identity theft, right? Because anybody can call you and tell you they're from Robert Half or from Intercept Group or whatever, right? So don't just trust anybody to give away your information. No recruiter should have this information. No recruiter. The recruiter is just a middleman between you or the, shall I say, the liaison between you and the clients. Why do they need it? Right? Okay. Now that we've taken that part, we understand. So the way you're going to prepare for these interviews, let's just say we're going to put, we're going to take a topic, all right, and we're going to I'm going to show you exactly how we're going to do the the, the research, and we're going to talk about how to create the story. This is how you're going to be able to speak with confidence because guess what? You have a story. This is the way you're going to be able to talk about what it is that you do because you have a story. Does that make sense? Now, I am being the person I am. I have a resume. And on my resume, I have more than one job on my resume. So what I do is, is that I actually take, depending on whatever kind of question, somebody asks me about SFIS or um. ETL work or anything like that, data warehouse, immediately I know I'm going to talk about Wells Fargo. Immediately I know that. It makes the interview process better because I automatically know based on the topics that ask me, I already know what job I'm going to ask for, I'm going to be talking about. Automatically. I did this when I came to Colibri in 2016. I did this myself. And once I actually changed up the way I was doing things, I got an offer on my fourth interview. Okay. So then the next thing. Um, if someone asks me by SSRs, I automatically know I'm going to be talking or reporting. I already know I'm going to be talking about all states. If someone asks me about SQL or anything like that, I know I'm talking about all states. I mean, talking about horsemen. Uh, um, I already know that. This stuff I know because I took the time to take my resume and figure out based on the topics at hand, what part of the job, what job I'm talking about based on what topic they ask me. So if they ask me about uh, working with SQL or store procedures or anything like that, immediately I'm going to talk about. So when I was working for Allstate, I did X, Y, and Z. I already know it's kind of like, it's like a trigger. It's like if I say something, boom, I know I'm going over here. But some of you are probably saying, well, Mika, what if I don't have several jobs? I only have one. I only have one job on my resume. That is perfectly okay. Because this is now where you're going to take the opportunity to actually take your actual um, project and break that down. So based on the questions that are asked of you, then you know exactly what um, part of your project you're going to talk about. So I can show you better than I can tell you. All right, here we go. Let's get a full screen, shall we? So let's get things for grants. Let's just say for wonderful grins that all I have is the mortgage project, okay? All I have is Colibri listed on my resume. And all I have is the mortgage project. That's all I have. That's the only project I have. For you, it may be crimes in California or Chicago between this time and this time. Whatever your project is, this is how you're going to utilize it. So I encourage you to write this stuff down. Uh, if you print this out like I did, write it on your paper, whatever you feel like you need to do to get this. Now, don't get me wrong, the, the what's your face, the, um, the handout that I'm going to give you it goes over topics, but it is what you learn here is going to determine how you actually do it, okay? 
All right, so let's move forward. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna write down the topic. So on one of the, on the handout that I gave, I used, I used a waterfall and agile methodology. So that is the topic. So let's just say, for instance, here's my example. Let's say, for instance, I go on an interview and the question that they ask me is, um, how, do, uh, which one do you prefer over the other? Agile and wa or waterfall and why? That was really a question that was asked to me at the company that I'm with right now. When they asked me that interview question, immediately I already knew what I was going to say. Okay. So, like I said, if you have more than one job, based on what it is that you know, um, basically put whatever topic, SQL, reporting, uh, data warehouse stuff, whatever, SSIS questions, make sure that it goes to different jobs so that way you can have different stories. But if like me, if you only have one job and only one project, then take it and break your project down. So I'm going to break down the mortgage project, okay? So that's all I have. So if you need to ask me any type of questions regarding requirement gathering, working with BAs, anything like that, I immediately, I'm going to revert back to the mortgage project introduction. Some of you are probably saying, I don't remember that. You still have access to the mortgage project, okay? If you don't, you can get it. If anyone's asking me questions about ETL or SSIS or even SQL, I'm going to revert, or, uh, revert back to stories one through five. If I'm covering any questions regarding data warehouse or even SQL, I'm going to revert back to story six. And anything regarding reporting, whether it's Power BI, Tableau, Click, I'm going to report back to story seven through 10. Okay. All right. That's how I was able to break down my project. Now, you're probably saying, well, that's a lot. Again, this goes back to you investing in yourself. How bad do you want the job? Right? How bad do you want it? Because it wasn't until I started doing this is when I actually got my offer. I went in there the first time, not really prepared, not really knowing what to expect. And guess what? I bombed the heck out of that first interview. The second one went pretty okay because I kind of figured out what was needed, but then I started getting serious. And then I went on that third and that fourth interview. And guess what? I got that I got the offer. Because I started understanding my resume and I started breaking down stories and coming up with creations. So that way, every time I went on an interview, I already knew what stories I was going to tell. And it made me a lot more confident and a lot more easier for my interviews to be. Because I had stories. And some of you are saying, well, I'm an introvert. And listen, you got to fake it till you make it. Even a deck gum turtle will stick his head out of his shell every now and then. Okay. So you got to stick your head out for a little bit and then go back in, you introverts. Okay, you got to fake it till you make it. Then be an introvert when you get the job, okay? They found out that I didn't talk a lot once I got there. In my interview, I talked a lot. But when I got on my job, I was working, it's like, really? Mm -mm, I don't. <laughs> so, and even to this day, I don't, even in my meetings here at Colorado, I don't talk a lot. I just sit. I talk to Jackie via text. <laughs> I talk to her, but I don't talk a lot, okay? I observe, that's what I do. So take your project and break it down. So because I'm all I have is mortgage projects, all I can use. I can't use your project, but take your project, figure out what part of the, like if whatever questions are going to ask you, what part do you want your project to represent SQL? What part of your project you want it to represent your reporting side? What part of your project do you want to represent just in case they do ask you some SSIS questions? You have to break down your project. Invest in yourself. Does that make sense? It does. Oh. So now that we have broken it down, we have chosen our topic. Our topic is going to be agile versus waterfall. And why did we choose that? Right? Why did we choose one over the other? Okay, so this is where we're researching. So this is my thing. And please do not get offended when I say this. But if you can't really explain it, then nine times out of 10, you really, you really don't really know exactly what it is or how it works. Okay. If you have a hard time really trying to explain it, and that means you need to go back and do a little bit more research on how to explain it, I mean, how, how it works and all of that. So if that means that you have to write the syntax down onto an actual note card, that's what I did with CTEs, honey, because I had to write that syntax down because I didn't use it every day. I used it enough to know that I'm, I need to put it on a note card because it's going to come up again. But I had to remember, oh, right, it, it begins with a with, right? Okay, right? So. If you are not sure about how to explain it, explain the question, then you need to do, you need to go back and really understand it, or maybe you don't, and then you need to go back and then figure it out. So that means you need to research it. 
So Google, this is what I used to tell my mentees when I was a mentor, Google explains it and it shows you how to create it by giving you a syntax. YouTube will show you an example on how to use it. So again, Google shows you what it is and how to create it, but YouTube will give you a little bit more information and give you examples on how to use it and when to use it. What about Does chat GPT? Huh? What about chat GPT? GPT? Uh-huh. Who's that? The AI. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Listen, we're not going to cheat today. We're just not going to cheat today. We ain't going to do that. <laughs> Look at you trying to be ahead. We're not going to cheat today. Okay. Uh, let me see. Okay, here we go. Um, let's go back. All right. So this is what you're going to do. We have our topic, right? So now we have our topic. So we got our topic, Agile versus Waterfall methodology. Which one do you prefer over the other? Now it's time to research it, okay? It's time to research it. That's what we're going to do. So let's research it. So at this point, we're going to type in Agile. Oh, here we go. I don't want that one though. Agile versus Waterfall methodology. Let's try this. And let's see what we come up with. You're probably saying, well, it's a lot, Mika. I know, I know it's a lot, I know. But here, this one right here will tell you exactly what is agile methodology and project management, all of that great, wonderful stuff. This is all about agile. I'm gonna say agile versus waterfall methodology. Let's try that. And let's try this one right here. Okay. So with this one, you get the agile versus waterfall, which project management methodology is best for you. Sometimes you do have to figure that out, okay? Um, they can tell you what ticketing platforms best, basically works best with one on waterfall, which, work, which, which one works better with agile. Um, and so this tells you which approach. So with the agile, yes, the gum stakeholders are in the process. They're in the middle of it throughout the life of the freaking project. And it's annoying. That's the reason why I prefer Waterfall over Agile because they get on my nerves, okay? Like, I want you to just see it at the end. Like, don't ask me a thousand questions. Like, <laughs> so I'm not going to say that in my interview, but I do prefer Waterfall over Agile. I just do. Don't say you prefer Agile over Waterfall because Agile is all you know. Don't say that. Actually do the research and figure out what it is about Waterfall because for me, I prefer Waterfall over Agile. Okay. And then with Agile, it tells you that requires this team initiatives and a short-term deadline. That is correct. Um, it gives you the pros, it gives you the cons, it tells you about the waterfall and more of a hands-off because I don't like the stakeholders involved, okay, is uh, completing deliverables is progress to the next phase. So that means that one phase cannot complete until the first one completes before that. It gives you the pros and the cons of it. it. Gives you even a comparison chart. Understand what the difference is between waterfall and agile and then make the option or make the choice to figure out which one is better, okay? Now that you have done your research, go on YouTube. YouTube will show you exactly how you can utilize actual agile and uh, versus waterfall. They will tell you all of that. So you have agile. So do the work. I know you're saying this is a lot, but again, you have to do the work. Okay. And there's so many videos on here talking about agile and the difference and the similarities and things like that. There's so many things on here. So many topics. Okay. Now you have done your research. You got your topic. You've done your research. Guess what time it is. Guess what time it is. It's story time. So now you have to create your story. You gotta create your story. So let me go ahead and blow this up real quick. So when you create your story, number one, do not start off answering the question. Be personable, allow your personality to shine every single time. So the question is, which one do you prefer, Agile or Waterfall and why? I'm not gonna go in with I prefer Agile. Um, because no, always be personable. Carol, you can answer every question right, but if your personality doesn't click with the company, they won't hire you. Does that make sense? So sometimes you got to fake it till you make it. 
So you want to always start off, don't start off answering the question, but be personable and allow your personality to shine. So for me to answer that question, and they say, which one do you prefer over the other? I would basically say, well, as you probably saw in my resumes, I've worked with multiple different companies. And with one company, I did Waterfall. And then I got with another company, we did Agile. But when I was with Berkeley Entertainment, I actually did both. And so my day-to-day, I did a lot of Waterfall. And then I'm going into my story. But I started off not answering the question because I'm trying to show them that I have a personality. Does that make sense? Did you, did you get what I'm saying right there? Does anybody not understand what I just did right there? Can you go, can you backtrack a lot of these? Do your presentation again, please, one more time. Okay, one, more time. one more time. So one more time. The question was, agile or waterfall, which one do you prefer over the, and why, over the other? And so the way I would answer it, I would say, and I wouldn't just say, Bryce, I wouldn't say agile, because that's going straight into the answer. Always allow your personality to shine, okay? So, the way I was started off, if they asked me that question, I would say, well, as you probably saw on my resume, I've worked at quite a few jobs. This is for people who may have multiple jobs on their resume, okay? So as you saw on my resume, I have quite a few jobs. In one job, I did Waterfall. And then another job, I actually did uh, Agile. But here at Berkeley Entertainment, I actually have the opportunity to do both. Um, we do Waterfall with our day-to-day. And then we actually do Agile um, whenever we're doing like, you know, many projects where the whole entire IT department is involved. And then I'm going to go into my story. Okay. And then I'll answer the question why I prefer one over the other, which I'm going to get to that in a minute. But do you understand now, Bryce? I, instead of me just going straight into yes. the answer, I'm going to allow my personality to shine first. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And maybe you're saying, well, I don't have multiple jobs. It's okay. It is okay. It is okay. If you don't, because that does not mean just because you've been with Colaberry, that doesn't mean you haven't worked on other projects. Maybe you have only worked on one project, but they don't know that, right? No, you only worked on one project. They only know what you tell them. Does that make sense? You got to be salesmen. You have to learn to sell yourself. Number two, give only your experience. So tell me your experience, not the process. Okay. So currently I'm working on a project and I encountered, I encountered this situation, da, 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 da. When I worked for Wells Fargo, I, I, um, I had a project that I worked on and da, 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 da. You're going to always, Bryce, sell me your experience, not the process. Do you know what I mean when I say don't sell me the process? Anybody not know? It's okay. You can take it off mute. You can say no. You can put it in the chat. But does anybody know what I mean when I say do not sell me the process? It is okay if you don't know it because I'm about to explain it. So you mean don't give a definition. Right. But where in instances where you I think it's big on definition example and more. I am not, I am an example and more kind of girl. Um, but I don't actually mean definition. Um, anybody else mm-hmm. have an idea of what I'm saying? You mean when like, I say don't give it to me, do not give uh, details on what the process is it? to do. Simply give examples of what you did, but not the right. process yeah. of doing yeah. it. Yeah, so personalize it, saying how you Okay, I don't know what happened there. I didn't do anything. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all you guys are right. Okay, so that's right. Um, You want to basically talk about the experience, but don't send me the process. So what I'm saying there, when I'm saying don't, don't give me the process, is this, like, if I ask you about... Um, tell me about a time where you and a coworker did not get along, or tell me about a time where, um, yeah, tell me about a time where you and a coworker didn't get along. Well, when I'm saying about to sell me the process, I want you to say something like along the lines of, hmm, because you always want to think about it, Stephanie. Don't just blurt it out. Don't act like you have it like automatically on your tongue. You gotta like think about it, okay? All right. So you think about it, and you just like, even though you already know the answer, but just just think about it, okay? Get, you know, let the experience rise, okay? So you're like, a time when me and a coworker did not get along. So there was this one situation that I had. Um, so what we were doing, we were actually uh, working on a project together. And every time I got ready to 
present my side or whatever, I had this one coworker who was always not for what I was saying, or we were never in agreement on, on situations. So what it is that we did is we, uh, what I did was is X, Y, and Z. That's me selling my experience because I went through it. Selling me the process is, so if you and a coworker don't get along, what you can do is, you know, maybe y'all can just talk about it or I would suggest that they go and they talk about it, go to a room, go to the side. You're selling me the process. Don't sell me the process. Don't tell me what you would do if the situation happened. Tell me what you did when it happened. Because guess what? I want you to be that person who has done it all. Okay? So don't tell me what you would do. Because if you're just going to tell me what you would do, I can just write, write it down. And then I don't need to hire you. <laughs> Right, because now I know what to do. Because you just told me what to do. But if you just tell me your experience, and I can say I'm gonna hire her because she had the situation, so that means she can handle it. Versus saying, okay, well, you just gonna tell me what to do. I write it down, and then I guess when it happens, then I, I know how to solve it because I got it wrote down. Right? Don't sell the process. Sell your experience every time on every single answer. Everything. Don't care if they ask you is the sky blue. You gonna sell your daggum experience. Okay, your experience is, well, you know, I'm sitting here now and I'm looking outside and it is blue, but you know, it's going to get dark about eight. So, you know, it'll get dark, but I don't live in Alaska where it's just dark half the year, but see, I'm selling you the experience. I don't want you to be like, well, typically at five, it, it will get, it will get dark, but uh, I mean, I at, mean this it's time, it's like, <laughs> at this time, it turned orange. At this time, it turned orange you to sell the experience i mean the process i want you to always sell your experience on every single question every single question every single one so correction mika with the um scenario of the waterfall and agile you only mm -hmm. have one job listing and your experience with agile but not waterfall so in this case, wouldn't you explain your experience with the Agile and then give the definition of um, the waterfall and what you know about waterfall, okay. not what you experience because you don't have that? Okay. So this is how you can sell. That's how you can spin this, Yama. Okay, really good question. Good, good, um, good job, Trick. Okay, so the question is, is that what if I only have experience in, uh, in um, Agile, but I don't have experience in, in Waterfall, but I know what Waterfall is, so can I just give the definition? So this is going to be the thing. Um, you're going to do it just like this. So um, as you probably saw in a lot of my, on my resumes that I have had the opportunity to, uh, well, as you saw me working here at Colibri, I do have my projects that I've worked on. Um, now, Colibri, we do dev in the agile environment. And so that is the one that I particularly know the most. So I can't really tell you which one I prefer over the other because agile is something that I know and I really do stand by it because I feel like it's a good, you know, X, Y, and Z. OK, now, now, don't get me wrong. I understand exactly what Waterfall is. I know the intel. It's just that I have not had the opportunity in the position that I'm in right now to work with it hands on. Um, but Agile is something that I do know. Now, I understand Waterfall. I understand the benefits and the pros and the cons. And so is that something that you guys do here? Do you do Waterfall or do you do Agile or do you do both? Put the ball back into their court. Allow them to talk so that way you can gather your thoughts. Because right now, Yama, the fact that she asked you that and you know you don't have experience with waterfall, you're like a duck. You're sitting very calm on the top, but you're paddling like hell on the bottom because you're trying to figure out a way how you're going to spin it, okay? So give put the ball back into their core by asking them a question so that way you can re uh, redo your thoughts, okay? But don't be afraid to say, um, in the current position I'm in right now, I currently do Agile. I understand what Waterfall is, but is that something that I'll be doing here once I start working here? Is that something that I'll be doing, um, um, you know, implement that? So put the ball back into the court to get them talking. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. I have a question related to the point number one. Uh, you mentioned some people might have more jobs listed in the resume, what determines how many jobs a person lists, like how many projects you do or? Uh, when I say jobs, um, you're asking me, does that, when I say more than one job, like I have, I have Wells Fargo on mine, Allstate on mine, Horace Mann, like I have multiple jobs listed on mine. Now, 
for projects you don't want to list multiple projects on your resume, but it's okay. Um, it's okay for you to say that I work for Colaberry, but you've worked on multiple projects within Colaberry. It's okay to say that. Don't list all the projects on your resume. You're only going to list just Colaberry, but if you want to talk about multiple projects that you worked on with Colaberry, you can do that. But when I'm talking about listing multiple jobs, that's because I have really, I really did work for Allstate. I really did work for Wells Fargo. So it's just that I just listed my real jobs. I just changed my title. Okay. All right. Moving on. Moving on. Last, um... Give me more than what I asked for. This is the most important to me. Um, give me more than what I asked for. Give me more than what I asked for. Give me more than what I asked for. This is so important. Oh my God. When you give me more than what I asked for, it shows me that you're going to go in depth about what it is that you go above and beyond by giving me the answers that I'm needing. And then it eliminates a lot of questions to be asked. They may have a list of questions to ask, but if because you gave me so much information, I may not need to ask you these questions. You see what I'm saying? Um, real story was in an interview. Person said, um, person said, what experiences do you have working with like indexes and, and things like that? And I said, oh, I said, huh. <laughs> I said, um, you would think the fact that I do work in this field that I have the opportunity to work with a lot of indexes and constraints and things like that. Okay. He only asked about indexes, but I gave him more because I talked about constraints. So I said, but the thing is, is that uh, the company that I currently work for right now, which is Wells Fargo, um, believe it or not, a lot of our tables are heat. See how I give you more than what I asked for, what you asked for. A lot of our tables are heaps. So we don't have a lot of indexes. We don't have indexes at all because there are heaps. Now, the ones that do actually have it, um, we do find ourselves having a few um, clustered indexes, of uh, primary keys. And because by default, it automatically creates a clustered index, um, we have some non-clustered indexes on there. Now, there has been times where I have realized that we have way too many non-clustered indexes on our table because when I'm looking at the HR table, we have a few HR tables where they're having to do a lot of updates and things um, because they have a lot of turnaround time in our customer service department. So they're having to terminate, delete, remove, update because someone got married, maybe someone went on maternity leave. So we had to remove some of those non-clustered indexes down there because if you have too many non-clustered indexes and there's a lot of activity going on this one, um, one, um, one table, it can actually affect your performance. So that's some of the things that we have to work with or we have to deal with. So I do have experience working with indexes um, because we do have quite a few heaps, but I'm not going to say that I don't have the experience. We really do. There's, It's just we have more heaps than we do tables that actually do have any type of constraints or indexes on them. So this is a way of giving me more than what I asked for. I talked about heaps. I talked about my experience and when I was working with the HR and how the customer service was doing, having a turnaround. So now non-cluster indexes will do this. I gave you the definition without me actually telling you the definition, right? I didn't say, well, a non-cluster index is this. I automatically told you. Non-cluster indexes, I get, you already know you can have multiple non-cluster indexes on the table. It automatically will um, help with your performance. But if you got a lot of activity that's happening with deletes and updates and all of that, it affects your non-clustered indexes. So now you got to think about removing some of those, right? And I just told you, when I have a primary key by default, it creates a clustered index, right? I told you more than what you asked for. So why do I need to continue to go down these line of questions when you pretty much know what you're talking about already? Does that make sense? And then hey guys. my companies, Mm -hmm. Okay. And then last but not least, always reference your company name. If you have more than one company on your resume, or if you only have one company, then mention that part of the project every time. So let's say, for instance, you only have one company, one project, Yama, right? So you're going to say, in the reporting pro um, portion of my project, I did X, Y, and Z. If you have more than one job, then you can say, when I was working at Allstate, I did X, Y, and Z always reference back to your job. So that way, when you mention Allstate, guess what? They're looking at your resume. Now they automatically, they went to Allstate. And then they can check out to see all the responsibilities that you did as you're talking about what you did at Allstate. It makes Mika, you very, I, very much believable. Uh-huh. Mika, I have a question, a kind of a suggestion. You know, like, I don't know, I'm just speaking for myself and then, you know, everybody can echo on this and see. Like, for us, most of us is going to be our first job. So can we tailor this more into 
because the project is going to be mainly our project going to be mainly our experience so can we tell her more the example based on how we're going to spin on our project because if you talk about your project this is going to be your project i'm just having to use the mortgage project because that's all i have but i want you to take your project and i want you to break it down onto how you're going to explain it in the interview Okay. No, no, I understand. So if you had to gather your requirements, then you're going to talk about the gathering requirement phase of your project. If that means talking about the summary or whatever it is, if you had to create your data set, that's going to be your SQL portion. If you're having to create those reports and things like that, that is your reporting part of your project. Did that make sense, Bryce? No, no, it does. No, what I'm saying, okay. like I say, as you're explaining things to us and then you refer back to job or stuff like that, but for us, won't we'll have in real uh, experience in real like uh, interview question is going to be our first interview won't we'll have our mainly job experience going to be collaborative so won't we'll have to list many job experience it's going to be the project that we're going to use so uh, what i'm asking you if you can you spin this around project more so than spin it around your job experience i don't know if you get what i'm well, saying I get what you're saying, but my thing about it is, is that not, not everybody only just have color barrier. So I'm trying to make sure that I broaden it out to everybody. So not everybody only just have color barrier. There are some people who do have multiple jobs listed on their resume. Okay. Now, again, if you only have one job, I mean, one job and one project, then the way that you will basically talk about it is just thinking about a portion of your project. So I cannot, re I cannot speak to your project because I don't know your project. I can only no, speak I got to that. your mortgage project. Yeah. So for the mortgage project, if someone was to ask me a question about the agile or maybe even the CTE, then I'm probably going to talk about story one through seven or I'm sorry, probably talking about yeah story one through seven and talk about me working with uh, creating my actual queries and things like that. I, that is the, you have to figure out what part of your project is going to be sequel you're going to have to figure that out like i can only spin it so much because you're going to have to figure that out right like i get what you're saying mika like say okay if i go on a power bi interview and they ask me sequel questions as far as regarding sequel i can talk about how i, I use uh exercise to integrate my data into sequel uh created a view uh group my data within sequel and then uh used it as a, a data source within power bi you know what I mean? There you, you go. Gotta, you just you yeah, you just mm -hmm. got to take your project and figure out what part of your project is going to be SQL and things like that. Only you can spin it. Right. But Mika, but Mika, wouldn't that be based on the job description? Like looking at the job description and saying, okay, I know how I might need to shape my answers or what they're looking for. Right. Exactly. That is absolutely correct. Take that job description and make sure that you make it tailored to that job. So that's the reason why that's important for you to also look at the job description and go over the job description with your mentors or go over it with me. So that way you can understand exactly how you need to tailor your answers. Take your project and tailor it to the job description. Okay. When I went on my SQL interview, I took my job and I made sure that it was mainly tailored around SQL. Even though they did ask me some um, um, some actual reporting questions, the reporting questions still went back to the data set and how I created that SQL for that data set. Like that was what I did for the SQL. When I went on a business intelligence job and they started asking me SSIS, even though I got a, a lot of my stuff is actually reporting, I still had to figure out a way that how I loaded all that information into a staging database by using ETL, using SSIS practices and things like that in order to do the reporting. You see what I'm saying? So you just have to figure out how you're going to tailor your project to that actual, to that actual job. I also okay. have a question uh, related to that. I was so, just going to ask, okay. is, is there a chance that they'll like uh, ask for more, uh, when, how would you say it, like more experience basically, like um, other occasions where you had to work with something so that you should probably have two or three other, like instead of just drawing it from your one project, you might need to have like something else so that, it, does that ever happen like the last year? Uh, it will what other occasions? sometimes. Uh -huh. They will ask you that sometimes if they feel it'll all the time I feel like they'll ever really ask that if they feel like they can't get enough information from you from the first project or whatever. Um, so they will ask, do you have um tell me about 
to um tell me about your prior project before this one they may ask that or they may say do you have any other work that you've done leading up to colaberry or leading up to this project that you've done what all how many projects have you worked on here at colaberry they may ask you that okay they may they just that's a question that they probably will ask okay right. uh, as for the mm -hmm. job description do the employer tell you what they want from you like when they contact like the kind of like, the skills you said uh, from the job description yeah oh. they pretty much yeah. tell you what you're going to be doing in their job mm -hmm. and so in the job much, you're right oh, go ahead. exactly I'm in the sorry. job description they're going to give you they start off with like the mission and what the company is and blah 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 right and then they're going to give you your responsibilities like what what you're planning to what they expect for you to do within that job and then at the bottom, it's going to have the requirements that you're going to need in order to get the interview, right? They're going to say, we want someone who has a bachelor's degree or an education, or they may say, you know, um, work experience in lieu of that, right? Um, they probably say it's someone who has Power BI required or preferred. But in that top portion, they're going to tell you your responsibilities is X, Y, and Z. We want someone who has experience doing, I'm not saying that. They probably say something like, um, we you're going to do um we creating dashboards from scratch um you're going to be working we want someone who's going to be comfortable working with a group or working with a team um gathering your own requirements like they're going to give you a list of things that they expect you to do as part of your responsibilities working here so that's a good thing to look at so that way you can determine whether or not you want to work that day home okay okay yeah all right, so let's move on because we are already at 8.30, so let's move on to the next one. Now, I have pretty much told you how this works, okay? Pretty much how I told you how this goes and all of that. So we've already showed you how to take the topic, so what you're going to do every single time, okay, and how you're going to be able to study this for yourself is, let me move this out of the way. Where are you, my beautiful bean footage? Here we go. So what you're going to do is take some of these topics down here at the bottom. Take some of these topics, whether it's SDLC, Agile, cluster indexes, indexes, just regular indexes, just index in general, um, emerge commands and SQL, um, one to many, many to one, many to many relationships. Listen, if you don't understand what this means, then you will never really understand or master how to do joins correctly. This is very important for you to understand how to do joins. Or even database design. So my thing is, is that if you're using joins, or shall I say, if you don't, if you don't, if you did a join and next thing you, know, you got all of this data, you more nine times out of 10, you use a many to many relationship. You have to make sure that you understand what a one to many, many to one, or a many to many relationship is for you to really master which joins you need to be using. Okay. All right. So these are the things that you're going to take. Take these topics, okay, and then plug it in and figure out exactly how you're going to do your, you got your topic now, right? And then do your research and then create your story. And then I just showed you how to do the story, okay? And then I even gave you an example. I gave you an example. Can you give me your experience working with dimension tables? One example and another one is another example, okay? So you can use these. As an example, so take the topic from the bottom, do your research on them, and then create your story. Okay? And that's all you need for this first handout. I'm gonna close this real quick. Um, let's see, where is my other handout? Okay, handout number two, and then we're gonna break for a second. So handout number two. All right, handout number two, handout number two, handout number two, communication. As you guys know, communication is very, very important, okay? So you need to make sure you prepare beforehand, practice active listening, be clear and concise, be confident, use positive language, be aware of nonverbal communication. This is the most important part to me. When they ask you a question, your face will definitely tell them that you have no clue how to answer that damn question because your face just told it off, okay? You be looking like a deer in headlights. They'll be like, oh, she don't know, okay? So be careful, Bryce is laughing, but this is for real. Like your nonverbal communications is very important, okay? Um, seek feedback and then practice, 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 okay? 
So when you're giving your experience, which we talked about, and in recent ticket that I worked on, I had to do X, Y, and Z. This is the correct way. What I do, what I would do if I face a situation is this is the incorrect way because this is you telling me your, uh, your process, okay? Give me more than what I asked for is what we talked about. So now we're going to have a little fun. And then after we have fun, we're going to go on a break. All right, so let's have a little fun real quick. Okay, so everybody understood what we just went over, how to do your examples, how to figure this out, right? Okay, so this is going to be fun. I'm going to pick, I said six, but I think I'm going to do four. I'm going to pick four people, okay? And two is going to be, it's going to be two groups of four, no. Four, no, yeah, two groups of two. There we go. <laughs> two groups of two, okay? What you're going to do is um, I need you to tell me about a time where you had to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Mm. Okay. I need your example and more. Or shall I say, give me your experience and more. The more creative and the group that you can sell me their experience and give me more than what I asked for wins and gets the job, okay? You're going to have about seven to 10 minutes to come up with your presentation, okay? Okay, okay? And you can be as creative as you like. Maybe you ran out of bread. Oh, maybe your kids don't eat peanut butter and jelly. I don't know, but I want you to sell me your experience. Like, I wanna believe that you really have made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I just showed you how to do this for experience and I just showed you more than what I asked for, okay? All right, so I'm gonna pick randomly four people and it's gonna put you in two breakout groups, okay? So you're gonna get an invitation to a breakout group and you four will be, well, two and two, will go to your group and figure out a way on how you're gonna come out with the story for the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And you're gonna come back and present that. And then us as an audience, will pick and choose. We're gonna do a poll, it's gonna be anonymous so that way nobody's mm -hmm. biased or nobody is saying, you didn't choose me. So it's gonna be biased, I mean, it's gonna be anonymous, don't worry about it, okay? And we're going to vote on which group one or group two we felt did better. Does that make sense? So great. Yay. Okay, so Davion, you in one group. Sorry. Sorry, I just saw you, so sorry. All right. Let's see. Who do I want to pick on? I'm going to find somebody who I want to pick on. So let me see. I'm going to pick on a few people who got their cameras off. Let me see. Oh, didn't these cameras turn off? Yes, they did. Okay. Let's Wait, Mika, um, you said I'm in I'm in one group or no group? You're gonna be in no, you're gonna be in one group. Okay. Okay. All righty. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. So Davion's in one group, and I'm going to put you with Davion. I'm gonna put you with I'll put you with Kenya. You and Ken, y'all been butting heads since y'all been on her. So I'm gonna let y'all figure out who, yeah. So y'all gonna figure that out, okay? So I'm gonna put y'all in the group. I'm gonna put y'all in a breakout group in just a second. The hand, this handout right here is gonna have to be the last one we do for tonight because it's already gonna be nine o'clock, okay? I'm gonna let them come back in about two minutes and then we're gonna finish up with them. So I am going to pick this back up next Tuesday so we can do handout three and handout four. And we need to do handout four because handout four is talking about scenario-based questions. You know, those ones where it says, tell me about a time where, you know, or what are your weaknesses and your challenges and that kind of thing. Um, so I really want to, I don't want to skim over that. I really want to make sure that I take my time to dive over that. Plus there's also an exercise with that as well. So next Tuesday, we're going to pick back up and do handout three and handout four and then wrap it up with the congratulation letter. Okay. But tonight I'm still going to go ahead and give you guys the handout one and two. I just wanted to, I just didn't want you guys to come and it was just like a lecture. Like I really wanted you guys to be like talking and interacting and understanding and understanding what we're, what's going on and how, and then um, I can see if I can figure out a way, I think I'm gonna ask Kofi to give me a project and figure out a way that I can spin it into the real world um, and things like that um, for you guys next Tuesday. I'll see what uh, Kofi can provide me. But again, I just wanted to make sure <laughs> that this workshop was not just, oh, you guys just coming to hear me talk. Right. Like I wanted you guys to be very interactive and, and all of that. Okay.
Um, okay, let me bring these people back. Yay! I hope y'all feel like productive. Do y'all feel productive? Yeah, no? you kind of we, up. we do. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all feel productive? <laughs> okay. So we have Team Peanut Butter, which is going to be Devion and um, Kenya. And then we have Team Jelly, which is going to be David and Bryce. So before I just, before you're voluntold, I'm going to give you the option. Who would like to go first? Peanut Butter or the Jelly? Well, this really depends on how do you, do you put the peanut butter on first or do you put the jelly on first? Who wants to go first? I've heard people put the jelly on first. Yeah. <laughs> so always that peanut jelly? butter. <laughs> it's always peanut yeah, butter. I normally right? do peanut butter first. Okay, well then guess what? Peanut butter team goes first because everybody's saying they put the peanut butter on first, which is quite true because that's how I do mine. Okay, team peanut butter. Figure out who's presenting and let's hear it. Let's hear it. We're open. You have the floor. Let's hear it. All right. Who's speaking so, so I can make you the okay? You speaking yeah. Danielle? Yeah, it's me. Right. We we debated on it. Okay, so uh, how I start off usually making a peanut butter jelly sandwich. I'm usually I'm usually in the mood for a snack, a sweet snack at that. At least when I have a sweet tooth. Uh, from my experience, I'm actually more of a savory person. Uh, so I just like to make a quick snack. So I go grab my bread. Usually I pick a brioche bread because it is sweet in itself and it's good with both savory things and sweet things. So then I go grab my jelly. I like to use high quality products. So I like to use organic uh, jelly because organic jelly uh, tends to have actual uh, grape remnants in the jelly. So I get the grape jelly, I spread it on, and then on the other side, I like to use Jiffy. Uh, most people like to use a crunchy or a, a peanut butter with, uh-huh. No, I'm just saying I'm a crunchy person. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I thought yeah. you were saying mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, but however, uh, sometimes I like to add other quality ingredients, such as pecans in a peanut butter jelly, in a peanut butter jelly sandwich. So I add my pecans or peanuts, you know, and then I, I uh, uh, put the sandwich together and that's pretty much it. Um, I have had the experience of adding other toppings onto my peanut butter jelly sandwich, such as other fruits like strawberries, uh, just to increase the quality of the peanut butter jelly sandwich. And that's pretty much how I put together my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Okay. That's my PB and right. game. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You lost me with the pecans and stuff. You lost me with that one, Pimp. Sorry. It's a crunch. It's a crunch. No. Usually I do the peanuts, but I, you know, sometimes you try different things. Y'all put in the chat. Are y'all smooth or y'all crunchy? Y'all put in the chat. Y'all smooth. Because you know, listen, I like Jiffy, but I use, but I, I am a, a no sugar added kind of girl. So like no sugar added. That's true. Jiffy. They can get sweet. And, or I do Peter Pan. Because you know, sometimes when you got that Jiffy, that Jiffy money, I got to go Peter Pan or that great value. I'm just saying. Okay. All right. I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> All right. Jimmy. Let's hear your side of the story. Who's presenting? Is it Bryce or is it David? I think it's me, Bryce. <laughs> All right. You have the floor. Go. All right. You know, butter and jelly sandwich. My first experience of making peanut butter and jelly sandwich, at first, I was a little bit lost because my son asked me, Daddy, I want PBG. What's PBG? Peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I said, oh, okay, I heard about it. So quickly, I have to deliver a very good sandwich for my son. So I ran to the store. And then my first experience, my first uh, challenge was, what kind of peanut butter I'm going to choose for this sandwich to be the best one? I have a myriad of brands in front of me. Jiffy, Skippy, Peter Pan, Teddy's. I, I said, I did a lot of people reading on the... Jar and then I went for Skippy. Got the Skippy, got the bread, got home. Uh, I have another challenge, but this one I was, I have more experience because I like jelly. So I went for uh, jelly, the strawberry one. So I get the, the bread. And to 
big make a lot of your spin on my peanut butter or jelly for my son. I toast it a lot of the, the bread. And then one side I put the skippy, the jelly, the other side I put the strawberry. Uh, and then I put them together. And then as they said, to make a good sandwich, you have to make sure that you slice it in um not in the mirror but in the diagonal way. So I slice it, give it to my son when he took the first bite. The smile in this in this face, I knew that I mastered the peanut butter and jelly for myself. So that's why I got my experience. I'm making peanut butter and jelly. Good job. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we heard the peanut yeah. butter side. We Bryce heard the jelly now. side. <laughs> <laughs> we, that was good. We, we're about to vote. So I'm about to cast the vote. You can only choose one. Okay. So are we ready? I need full participation. And let's launch. Go. But before we leave, tell me some good things about peanut butter. So let's hear from the peanut butter side. What are some of the good things and or maybe some things we can improve on the peanut butter side? Go. Anybody. Take a sip off mute. Okay. So first off, peanut butter. You, 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 you presented peanut butter. You can't oh, 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 my bad. <laughs> I was about to list you some facts, man. I'll tell you. It's I would like to know more about the bread. What kind of bread did you guys use? Is it the sliced bread or, I mean, you're explaining to someone who doesn't have any knowledge about peanut butter sandwich and I'm at a loss. I'm like, none of the two groups disclose what kind of bread they use for peanut butter sandwich. I think you said brioche. I, just, right? I disclose yeah, I said brioche because it's actually a Parisian bread. She don't know if it was sliced okay. or not. She said she don't know oh. if it was sliced or became whole. She don't know none of that. Uh, sliced gotcha. bread. <laughs> Got it, mine, mine's was the whole sandwich, you know. I, I like <laughs> All right, the, anybody the else can give me some information. Not just peanut butter. Let's do both peanut butter and jelly. Give me some takeaways on what they can improve on for both groups, or maybe just for one, and some good things about both, or just for one. Go ahead. Um, I like the scenario that uh, Jelly gave, um, saying that he, you know, had to make the sandwich for his son and. I like that because it because it is like real world experience. I guess I like that I like, aspect. I like how both of them made it very personal, right? They they shared their personality. They allowed their personality to shine. One was saying, "Well, my son came to me. Hey, you know, I want a PBJ. What does that mean?" Like he had he was showing me that he had the interaction with his son. The other one was like, "Well, you know, if I'm in the mood for a snack, then you know, I like you know, I like savory. I like salty. I like sweet. You know." So I love how you gave me. Kind of like an introduction before you just went into answering the question. So I thought that was good. I can definitely say the one thing I did like about Jelly is that he gave me a challenge. He told me about a challenge that he faced. He says, when I got to the store, there was all these different types. There was Skippy. There was Jiffy. There was Peter Pan. I mean, crunchy. Then you got, once you figure out what brand, then you got crunchy. Then you got smooth. Oh, now you got organic. Like, he gave us challenges that he faced. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that. I like that. Anybody else? Yeah, the jelly one feels like he's talking about his experience. The but the Devian, he said like he's making in front of him right now. He's just living the experience. <laughs> he's living the experience right now. <laughs> Got you. All righty. So just, before I share this, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just think it's better if fix that toast. That's all. I'll fix the toast. No, you gonna be one of the Need some water because that bread so they're gonna fit. Exactly, I was about to say this. Like, this is not spaghetti. Look, and I'm in Texas. Look, you don't want to try to take the stuff, man. So, the point of it is, is that I wanted you to figure out a way. It's something as simple as a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on explaining your experience by giving me your experience making it and giving me more than what I asked for. Um, even though it didn't relate to IT, but you still was able to take what we just learned about utilizing about a lot. Both of you guys understood the fact that you gave me your personality up front, right? Up, like none of neither one of you started off giving me the answer. So I appreciate that. That means you actually understood the, you know, understood the actual uh, topic and what we were talking about, right? Understood the lesson. And then after that, then you told me your experience, but then you also gave me more. How um, Bryce was talking about the challenges and then how Davian was talking about, you know, like the different types of, uh, like how he likes salty and told me the things that he likes and yada, yada, yada. Like it was a conversation. So I thought it was great. 
All right. But unfortunately, there can only be one winner. Okay. All righty. So here we go. Here we go. And the winner of the PB and J challenge is dun, 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 dun. Jelly. Yep. <laughs> Jelly. <laughs> yeah, Vars is good. Vars is good. <laughs> good job, money. right? Uh, no. Good job, no, baby. My teammate did it all, and then he asked me to present. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was good. good. It was good. Good job. And so that was what I wanted you guys to learn. It's just to make sure that it, it was my way to make sure that you understood the lesson that we talked about by giving me your example and then giving me more than what I asked for. Okay. And then selling your personality. So you guys did a wonderful, wonderful job. So I am going to go ahead and let you guys go for the night. Um, next Tuesday, we're going to pick back up and we're going to finish up handout number three, where we're going to talk about the most common interview questions. Okay. Um, so it's going to be the most interview questions asked for business intelligence, Power BI, Tableau, Click, all of those will be added in there. And then you also, we're going to do a scenario questions and we're going to also talk about the star and all of that. And then we'll break out into another group again. This time there'll be three groups and we'll do another one, but this won't be about an amusement park exercise. Okay. Um, and then last but not least, we'll do a congratulation letter. Um, that's very important. And then we'll end it and then now get that survey out to you guys. Okay. Mm -hmm.